are the crop. Floating seed, stolen a bitter breeze, sold us here. A bitter sea warned us here. Better be more for us here than this. We are sidewalks cracking, never concede to the bend of your rain and hail. You have captured winter and called it jail with barcodes that slide shut and steel walls that hide us from the sun. But we are the crop. We declare springtime in the shadows of your twin towers, our flowers like fists raising from the earth, unhinged by the chafed nostrils of a beast snorting melanin, one felony at a time. Deep into its skin our medicine seeps, deep into our kin our medicine steeps, for every flower hemmed up, every broken stem stuck in your concrete altar, your memorial. July 1st, Los Angeles, Marlene Pena. July 17th, New York, Eric Garner. July 26th, the Bronx. Rosanne Miller. August 4th, Beaver Creek, Ohio, John Crawford. August 9th, Mike, uh, Ferguson, um, Missouri, Mike Brown. <coughs> August 11th, Los Angeles, Esel Ford. September 24th, Hammond, Indiana, Jamal Jones. October 8th, Shaw, Missouri, Von Derrick Minor. City of Los Angeles, all of its business leaders, especially, but also as political leaders, do not know what to do about the violence because for them it's normal. They don't even know the Second Amendment. Amendment was a compromise in the constitutional conventions and the discussions afterwards for the slave owners. We wanted to have power to carry weapons and to form posses to go after escaped slaves so that they could punish them and or kill them. That's the root of the Second Amendment. I'm half white, half African American, so I've always kind of dealt with like dealing with both of the social stigmas. Um, and my family is very multicultural based, so I don't necessarily have the same kind of like feelings towards one race over the other because I see a point in my family getting it along. So that's why I generally like to raise those questions to both sides saying, you know, if I'm a product of two different races getting you know, along, then everything should be able to get along the same way. It's as far as with the policemen, um, I do have family members that I am scared for because with, when both parties create this kind of social stigma and there's violence, I'm worried for my family member's safety regardless of what side they're on. Um, and it's something that it's not okay because police are here to protect and serve. This conversation today was um, helpful in hearing some of the questions, concerns, hearing also some of the similarities, right, that folks are having. So really having like heightened and emotional responses to things that have been happening on the ground in Ferguson as well as in our own communities around um, state violence and how folks are interacting and experiencing those things. And folks needing space to process, folks needing space to be able to see folks processing with each other because I think this uh, CSUN is a community. It's a community in and of itself. And I think as folks um, are hearing each other's different experiences, are hearing each other's different reflections, then we start to ask the question, well, how do we actually make your CSUN experience one that supports you as you're hearing and witnessing all of these other like harms outside of maybe this space? Um, and so it felt powerful to have folks start engaging in some of the, what do they actually want to do? Our harvest, we are microphones darting from the soil. Dandelion check, one, two, roots and robust and rumbles of the earth. Soon there will be no silence, there will be no sirens, there will be no silence, there will be no cracked ribs, last breaths, or broken teeth left in undisclosed, unmonitored, or gray areas.